Hey guys, my name is Hitman and I am back again with another Destiny video. Going to be doing a tutorial or a walkthrough kind of on how to get gold tier on the Wretched Eye Nightfall this week. Now this is probably my least favorite strike in all of Destiny. Like I absolutely hate this strike so much. It is just the worst thing ever. Like it was on Voidburn a couple of weeks ago and it was literally just undoable because I mean every single team you come across on LFG is absolute garbage. They are just the worst players I have ever come across and I, I had some of that luck today. It's literally, literally the worst players. They might, I don't, I think they didn't even have thumbs. They, they just didn't have thumbs. They were just mashing the controller with their foreheads. I, I, I don't know what they were doing but they were just the worst players ever but I'm gonna get straight into it and uh, we're just going to run through how to get gold tier on the Wretched Eye Strike uh, for the pile of ass that it is. So yeah, as I said, it is the Wretched Eye Strike, which I absolutely hate. And the modifiers this week are going to be Epic, Brawler, Fresh Troops, Match Game, and Exposure. Now, as you can see, there is no burn this week, which kind of sucks, because I, I really, I, I much prefer it when the burn is on, because that's the way Nightfalls used to be, and when they were good, that's how it was. But uh, this week we do obviously have exposure, which absolutely sucks. I hate exposure so much. It makes everything so difficult and uh, your teammates tend to suck, especially, you know, if you're running a hunter, you're basically screwed on exposure because they have almost no armor and terrible recovery. Uh, match game means you do actually have to run a burn of every single type. So like I was running, let's say, a void subclass with a arc and solar secondary and heavy and then everything else is okay brawler means you can just really run a really melee based subclass so striker titans really excel at this as well as certain warlocks you know like obviously using um using solar grenades and stuff on warlocks but i think the striker is probably best for that in this one in particular i was running with my hunter and um, i had the hunter spec out to just tether shit because it's awesome uh basically i was running the vortex grenade triple jump black hole and venomed and then everything else is just like whatever and light of the pack was pretty handy as well as well as shade step is obviously integral to everything i do because sh shade step it just stops me dying from everything ever but um yeah so basically this strike is actually easy enough up until you get to the boss and uh, most of it is you're literally just running straight through all the ads like i said if you're running a melee based subclass you can just be just popping them off with your with your fist it's really not that hard i mean like if you're using striker titans with things like thagomizers um and let's say like the monte carlo or something you're going to be getting melee charges all the time so it really makes it quite easy most of the ones most of the enemies will die in one go um if they are not you know the, the yellow enemies whatever but uh, they will actually die in one go so that does actually make it kind of easy i mean you can just continually punch them over and over again and your storm fist then in turn uh, actually recharges your uh, fist of havoc your fist of panic so uh, it's actually it's actually works really well but like i said i was running the void walker in this kind of preparing for the boss and obviously like i said using shade step to run the fuck away when everything comes after me um but yeah it's actually really good for this as well because i like using the vortex grenade with the acid grenade as well and it just makes everything really easy because you know they just like the doors open and like 15 enemies come out you're like oh shit what do i do you just throw grenades and run away it's great but um yeah, like I said, it's actually really easy to kill all these enemies. You're literally just running through most of the first part of the entire strike. It's 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 actually really easy, except for when you get to like the best way to destroy the Siva nodes at the start. There's like a bazillion servitors everywhere, and I absolutely hate servitors. They just wreck me in this. Um, you, even just using snipers and stuff, I have ridiculous longbow synthesis and stuff, and they like take off tiny little chips off their health, and it really pisses me off. But uh, yeah, so they they die quite slow. It's really annoying, and they take off so much health when they fire. But uh, you do get them eventually. I mean, it's it's not that hard. But there's just so many enemies. Like everything in this strike is built to just fuck you up. Like there's so much stuff coming after you, and they're all yellow, and it it just it just sucks. So. Pff whatever you just you just make sure your super is charging all the time fire it off great thing about the tether is it does hinder all the enemies so it's actually really handy and uh, it's actually it's actually kind of cool doing that because it means your teammates and all will get orbs out of it as well as well as you getting all the extra points but anyway after you've ran through basically all these waves of enemies you're going to come to the last couple where you probably get a heavy box at the end which is actually pretty handy you're just going to kill the last couple of enemies and drop down into the pit now, when I was doing this, there's really two ways you can do the boss fight. Um, one way is obviously legit, and the other way is a really cheesy, really, really bad, like, gear one cheese fucking bullshit way of doing it. But it works, it's great, uh, if somebody knows how to do it. I only figured out this today, somebody told me, and I was like, oh my god, how, I, how did I not know that? Because trying to do this on Voidburn before was absolute, it was, it was hell, it was an absolute nightmare. 
Uh, but some guy showed me this today, and it was actually it was actually really cool. It worked really well. But um, yeah, so first of all, if you're doing it legit, basically what you're going to have to do is get the boss down to half health, which is obviously easy enough, you just fire rockets and snipers at him forever, but you get him down to half health and then you'll see shanks falling from the ceiling. Once you see the shanks, you need to stop shooting the boss and get rid of all of the shanks, because once you start shooting the boss again, the ogre will enrage and he'll run after you. So make sure you get rid of all of the shanks, that is absolutely imperative. You need to get rid of all of them and then you can start shooting the boss again or else the shanks will literally just, they, they, they will ruin your day. It's, it, they'll, they'll destroy you. Um, but after they're all gone, you can start shooting the boss again. The ogre will enrage and at that point you're going to have to get one of your teammates to try and take the attention of the ogre and try and get him to kind of hold where the ogre is so he doesn't come over near you and your other teammate who are going to be shooting the boss. Um, try and keep one teammate just go on ads, see if there's any extra shanks or like dregs and vandals coming out of the front. Uh, if there isn't, both of them can shoot the boss and then the other teammate will have to be taking care of the ogre. Because the ogre will come over and just one hit all of you. It's, it's ridiculous. Like, I mean, the ogre is so powerful. I mean, he can't always one hit on his melee, but he'll like launch you across the map. And then the, the freaking war priest will just like no scope you across the map with his, uh, I don't know, his grape jelly launcher. But... Um, yeah, so like they they will kill you pretty quickly So you do really need need one teammate to take care of the ogre And then obviously once you do that the ogre will enrage and at that point your teammate is just gonna have to run around jump over the ogre and jump back and then try and take care of him that way and then just take out the boss. There's really no other way to describe it. Literally, it's just one teammate distracting the uh, ogre and then the other two just absolutely laying into the boss with as many rockets and LMGs, snipers as you can. There's really nothing else to it. But secondly, guys, you have the really cheesy way, which I hate doing, but I also really love doing because it makes it so much easier. Basically, as you can see here, I'm jumping up. You, you do actually really need the uh, need the triple jump on the Hunter for this. You can do it on the Titan. It's a little bit more difficult. Uh, and obviously on the Warlock as well. The Titan just has a more accurate jump than the Warlock. And then obviously with the Hunter you can get the triple jump. So you can just like jump really precisely into place. But basically guys what you're going to do here is there's like a ledge in the corner. Uh, that's like hiding behind like a rock thing. You can like jump up on top of that. And then you're actually totally hidden from the ads that come out of the front with the War Priest. And you're also hidden from the War Priest. He can't shoot you. But you can shoot out. Out. The great thing about this is you can shoot all of the ads that appear on the screen and you can shoot any of the ads that come out of the middle You can shoot the shanks that come from the top which is actually really handy for your teammates as they're firing on the boss or trying to protect the pr Protect themselves from the ogre You can be shooting the shanks that are coming out of the ceiling and trying to like protect them and make sure they stay alive and um, Also from that area you are not able to be hit by anything and the best thing about it is, if you can stay there and you can get your teammate to bring an ogre near you, the ogre will get distracted by you and the ogre will just like glitch out and start like spazzing out in front of the rocks and he won't be able to hit anybody. He'll just stick there like trying to like lash out at you, or just like having a little seizure in the corner and he won't be able to do anything, which means that your other teammates, the other two of them, are free to just go and have a go at the boss while you are also shooting ads and hitting the boss as well. So it does mean that it is a little bit easier for you to actually get that done. It means that there's kind of like an extra teammate that you actually have an extra hand like on deck to try and kill the boss, which does make it a lot easier for everybody involved. The best thing about this is that you can also fire your shadow shot and your snipers and stuff from up there. Rockets are a little bit more difficult because the ogre's arms kind of like lash out everywhere and it's a little bit, a little bit more awkward. Um, but you can fire them if you're accurate enough. The bad thing is you can't throw any grenades because they will just hit the wall in front of you and it does kind of suck. And also if you're using shade step and you duck too, you duck like twice really quickly. Uh, you will end up jumping off of the ledge, like rolling backwards off it, and then the ogre will sit on you and he'll kill you. Um, so you do kind of need to be wary of that, but other than that, it's actually a really, really good spot because you can just keep firing out over the edge. It's actually a really good way to get rid of this boss, and it means that there will always kind of be one player alive. Um, if you're going to be using a subclass that has obviously like the void walker it doesn't have any, any invisibility on it except for the grenade if you throw the grenade on or if you're using something like the capri sting or you can throw on patience and time you can make yourself go invisible and go get your teammates if they go down which is actually a really handy way of getting this strike done if all of your teammates do go down while you're distracting the ogre it means that you can run over to them and then get them up and then obviously you know you're just going to kill the boss it's really easy throw on your three of coins and you'll get the rewards there's nothing really that much else to it it's actually a really good cheese spot for this i hate saying that because i hate the cheese spots but i also really love them but anyway yeah guys that's that's pretty much it i guess there's 
that was actually a really long cut com video commentary thing. I was I've, I don't really do that very often, but uh, you know, New Year, New Me, all those uh, New Year's resolutions and stuff that I was talking about yesterday. <laughs> you know, keeping to this, keeping to the schedule already. It's a uh, you know uploading Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays, but I'm I'm uploading on a Tuesday because um, yeah. Because, because I'm very good at keeping to my goals, alright? But uh, anyway, guys, if you did enjoy, make sure you drop a like, comment, or subscribe on the video. And I will see you in the next one, guys. Hitman out.